Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? <laughs> Great. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you for taking part in this interview. Uh, can we get started with your name and your position? Um, my name is Aikisha Little, but everybody calls me Little. Um, I play wide receiver. Um, I've done some quarterback. Uh, I play corner, linebacker, anywhere really. They need me. Okay. Tell me, how did you get introduced into flag football? Okay, so I feel like I was drowning myself in like work and stuff. So I decided I either was gonna go back into hip hop class or flag football. So one day, it was my birthday, I was out. I went outside by myself downtown and I ran into this girl, her name was Danielle. She was like, oh my God, you look so cute. Let me buy you a drink or whatever, blah, blah, blah. We was talking it up and somehow we got onto flag football. And then she introduced me to Grit Iron and then been history ever since. Okay. So how many years have you been playing flag football? It's been about three months. Three months. Yeah. So this is your first season. Yes. Oh, so you are a, truly a rookie. Yes. Okay. Tell me about the rookie experience. Um, I really love it. Um, I used to play softball, so this gives me like the same rush as softball. Um, I'm trying to learn everything as much as I can from everybody. I appreciate all the feedback. Um, I feel like I'm kind of the underdog right now, so the more practice I put in, the more I come out, and I feel like I can make a bigger name for myself. Okay. You've been doing pretty well as far mm -hmm. as what we've caught on camera, mm -hmm. um, caught, you, uh, caught you completing a few passes. You were looking pretty good out there. Um, how, tell us how, how does it feel? And your in your first year being on the field against other players mm -hmm. and even with your teammates as well how does that feel to you um so sometimes i feel like i have to establish the trust like a lot of times i'm walking into like a new team they already have that trust built um i know i'm kind of new to the sport so some people are kind of like if it's about listening to me, but I'm and I'm trying to learn the game as well, and I'm trying to analyze what will work best, what will work best. So once we build that trust, I feel like it goes smoother. Um, as far as playing against other teams, they do underestimate me because I am small, I am little. So I just feel like I'm not proving something to them, but I'm proving something to myself by just going hard no matter what, whether the ball comes to me or not. Okay.
Me personally, I think that I've changed a lot. Um, I have better field awareness. I have better analyzation of our opponent. Um, I'm still trying to get to the point where, like I wanna be that person where they could trust me, like say if we're down or something, or offense, they need somebody to score. Like I wanna get to the point where I'm that person. I'm not truly there yet. Um, I still have a lot to work on, like as far as field vision, I need to work on my north, going north instead of east to west. Um, I feel like once I do get that down, I will be somebody to watch out for. But yeah, I don't even know if I answered the question. <laughs> I kind of forgot the question. But. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, re I'll reiterate the question for you. Okay. The question is, um, what are the biggest changes that you've noticed from the beginning of the season to mm. where you are now? Can it just be me or like the team? It can be anybody. Okay. Okay, I said me. So now I'm going to move on to the team. Let's go. Um, I feel like the biggest change for me, I would say this is getting back into like female sports. Um, the biggest change for me is like the emotions that come with football or that come with a team. I feel like once we get past the emotional, we put our emotions aside and we be teammates first, then we can get to that next level or we can get to where we are. So I would say the emotions is probably the biggest change for me here, say being new to the team or stepping into the team. Um, but we do still have people who do want to learn, who do come out to practice. Um, yeah. Okay, um, as far as losing, I feel like we haven't figured out ourselves, like we haven't gotten the team part down. Like we have people who will come and work and catch and do all of the physical, but we don't have the mental down. So until we get that emotional connection, until we get that team connection, we're gonna be losing a lot of games because we have to be there to pick each other up when we're down. We have to tell each other like, okay, next play, even if we get scored on, it's next play. It's not, let's get beat up in 21-0. So, I mean, we can pull it together when we need to, but we're just missing those mental elements that would make us a winning team. Uh, what would you, what would you say uh, falls into those contributions as to why you guys are not connecting as much as you think you should be? I will say, and this is nothing against females. I'm female. We are very emotional. So sometimes we think, we react, before we think, like, hey, this is my teammate, I love my teammate to death, I wouldn't put my teammate in harm's way. So if we stop reacting and we think about it and, and we decide, does this matter or does this not matter? If it doesn't matter, we just move on. We talk about it, say, hey, I love you, move on. So, I mean, we just have to separate our emotions from football. Because at the end of the day, we're all here for football, we're spending our money, we're going to tournaments, um, we're going to different states. We just have to put football first and be a collective team, and then we handle that off the field. Hello, hello. I am looking forward to winning consistently. Like, winning consistently, growing, um, the team bonding, the collectiveness. I'm looking forward to all of that because I understand like right now, I'm the type of person where I'm okay with the losing. I understand that we don't have everything we need to win right now. We have the players, we have the effort, we have all of that, but we're missing that connection that, that um, yeah, we're missing those pieces right now, but I feel like once we get that under control or we get that handled, we will be able to win because I know we can win. We've won before. So once we get those missing elements, um, I feel like we will be a winning team. I'm okay with losing right now. I'm still learning. I'm a rookie. I'm two months in. I still haven't learned everything I need to learn. So I'm okay with growing with Gridiron as a team. Like If we all grow together, I feel like we could really win. What do you think you could do? 
to help forge those connections to be stronger. So, so winning is more of an assurance, mm -hmm. more of a, a certainty rather than a possibility. Yeah, I think this goes back to the other question you asked me. Um, what did I see in myself as growth? Um, I feel like I'm more of an aggressive player. The more aggressive I become, the more flags I pull. I feel like my team, like it hypes us up. So me personally, I need to be more aggressive. I just feel like I need to do more. I need to stop being so, what if I do this or thinking about it? I just need to go ahead. Um, the more players we have, maybe that will, um, you know, affect other players. Everybody will be more aggressive and that will build us as a team. If, if I need to step up to be a leader, I'm okay with stepping up to be a leader. Um, I'm really, I'm here to play football and anybody who wants to win, we can all do that together. That's what I'm here for. Hope that's what they're here for. So, yeah. We had to make some personnel changes. Um, you know, we had to do some things to, to shake up the team. I had to do some things, not only in my coaching style, but also within the roster, I had to make some changes. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody in the grand scheme of North Carolina knows what I'm talking about. So I won't go too, in too much detail about it, but we had to make some changes overall to, I don't want to say fix what went wrong, but we had to just change the overall scheme of how we did things. Mm -hmm. And I also had to change some things about myself. Okay. Uh, are you free to unpack some of that? Um, I mean, not going into too much detail, but ultimately I felt like with the staff that I had and with some of the leadership that we had in place, I felt that we weren't all on the same page. You know, I'm in the book of Gridiron Gang and some people might be in their own book. They might have Gridiron Gang on the page, but it's a different book, you know what I'm saying? So with me, I'm thinking Gridiron Gang all the way. Uh, but some people are thinking maybe of their own, their own goals or their own, you know, whatever, their own merits, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, I had ladies that were Gridiron Gang and they liked the way I do things. So once I realized that people like the way I do things, where they needed me to take charge, they needed me to be the leader that, that everybody knows and believes I can be, that's when I decided to say, hey, you know what? I need to shake up the team. I need to do things differently. And that's what I did. Would you, uh, how, would you say there was much of a build to this sudden change or was it just hot on the spot? Uh, tell me about what. Well, tell me about the mindset that you was having when all of this was coming to play, and that encouraged you to make these decisions. Um, I think it was multiple conversations. Like I know there's a lot of speculation going around. Like there's, it might be one person, but in reality, it, you call it keeping the receipts, right? Mm -hmm. So you keep the receipts on things that people said, things that people did. You know, there's some things that I let happen. There's some things that happened out of my control. You know, but the things that I let happen, you just see, you want to see how things play out. So it's like if somebody's trying to do something to undermine or overtake what I do, I want to see how this plays out. You know what I mean? So that's just the social scientist in me. Like, I want to see like how this plays out. Like, oh, this person believes they can do what I do. I want to see that, you know, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, hmm, now I got to step back in and correct what didn't work. Yeah. But ultimately, I'm the type of person that I don't, I had assistants, I had other coaches. So it's like, this is my first time having a staff. So it's like, I'm trying to give them the reins and they're going with it. And some parts they're successful, other parts they fall short. But I think the only thing the overall team was asking is that everybody hold themselves accountable. And at the end of the day, when account, the accountability questions were coming up, it was all going to me. And that's where we had a big issue. Because I hold myself accountable for the things that I do. So I would expect anybody that's working with me or under me, whether I'm there or not, to hold themselves accountable 
when the players are asking them. Mm -hmm. So if the player's asking them something, then I expect the, the coach first to hold himself accountable and not just point the finger at somebody else. Because that's leadership, that's right. coaching. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't, you can't always just blame other people. I know you have to control what you can control, but at the end of the day, it's like, we as coaches, you can't just say, oh, that's the head coach's fault. It just can't, it's just not how it goes. If it's gonna be my fault, I'm not gonna take all the blame. I don't need any help. And that's ultimately what came down to my decision. I said, if I'm gonna take the blame, I'd rather take the blame solo than take the blame when I have help. Mm -hmm. So with this account, with this whole accountability uh, situation, would you say the, um, you're saying the accountability was, was becoming more shifting blame. Correct. Than us, Pretty Absolutely much, correct. pretty much, just taking, taking the hit. That's it. So it's like, if I'm gonna take the hit, I might as well take the hit solo. Because that's what I, I mean. Think about it. And I said this earlier in the docu series that this is the first year that I've had a staff. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this solo for the last three seasons. So this would be the third season I would have done it solo, but I ended up having a staff, which I love my staff. I still love everybody, yeah, despite the fact that I let everybody go. I still love them. I have a lot of love for them. There's no hate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have nothing but respect for them. But at the end of the day, when I'm hearing and I'm seeing, hey, every single thing that's wrong with the team has nothing to do with me as an assistant coach, me as an offensive coach, me as a defensive coach. This has everything to do with Troy, the head coach. Mm. I might as well do a solo. And that's it. Okay. Now, uh, you have you had had to make the decision to let go of a few people. Sure. Uh, not just coaches, but players as well. Um, one of those players, she told us earlier in the docu series when we first conducted interviews that she was willing to do whatever it takes to lead the team. Correct. Apparently, according to her, that's what she said. She told you. Absolutely. And now, she is one of those names that had to go. Right. How, reflecting upon that, you know someone who wanted to step up being a leader because the first leader left is now being the leader that has also left. How does, how do you think, how does that feel to you and what, how do you think that feels to the team? So it hurt. Like I said, nothing, none of this was easy. You know what I'm saying? I will say that I made some assumptions, like without question, I made huge assumptions. And that's the one thing I will say that if I made a mistake, it was a huge assumption that if I let one person go, that others would go. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would say I made a mistake. It's like, I didn't give them a chance. I didn't give them a choice. It was like, hey, I'm gonna let this person go. I'm gonna let this person go. And then the others were just being let go because they were aligned with those people intimately. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, hey, I'm getting rid of that person because I don't like this person. Because again, love all of them. But I didn't give them a choice. It was like, hey, I'm letting these people go because I felt like they're bundled together mm -hmm. and I let them go as a bundle. So it wasn't, it wasn't like personal against the individuals. It was possibly two people. I was like, you know what? I could, I'm going to let these two people go, but because they're so intimately close, I just got rid of the whole group. Do you feel like you regretted or you think you should have did it a little better I only, now? I only regret not giving them a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty much it. I regret not giving them a choice uh, to make adult decisions. Yeah. Um, the way I delivered the information may have been a little, you know, inconvenience, unprofessional, however you call it. But ultimately, the decision was fine. I think it was just a matter of not giving the choices. Okay. What about the, what about the uproar from the team once they've learned about the decision that you've made? Uh, what, did you expect uh, the? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say backlash. Sure. I would say more of the responses. Were you expecting the nature of the responses? I was open. Open to, the to responses. it. Yeah. I mean, whatever happens, happens. Because at the end of the day, as the person, as the person taking the blame, it's at this point, it's either hey, I'm leaving, or I can make a move, and they, and people are leaving. So if people have an issue with me, 
I can get rid of the people that, that are claiming to have an issue with me holding or uh, holding me to a certain point. Mm -hmm. So it's like at, at that point, it's either them or it's me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a lot of people told me flat out, you know, hey, coach, you know what? You need, and nobody was, again, nobody was in agreement with this. Like nobody signed off. Like nobody was like, oh my God, coach, you gotta cut all these girls. Nobody else, this is strictly my decision. Like nobody else was like, you need to get rid of them. In fact, everybody was like, no coach, you know, nobody wanted this. You know what I mean? So that's the part where it was like, that's on me. I went all the way in, all my chips are on the table. This is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I put it out there for everybody to see because it's like, hey, if anybody does have anything in disagreement with this, hey, you have several hours to say your piece and then we're done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, I I just made the decision, you know? It was five in the morning and I just, I just made a decision. I know it impacts my entire team and could impact the future of the team, but it was a decision that in the beginning, of course it hurts, still hurts to this very moment. You know, because again, love the women, love the coaches. But at the end of the day, I had to think about the overall team dynamic and the overall vibe that we were looking for. And the people that wanted me to be the head coach and continue to be in leadership. And I said, you know what? I just have to make a move. And I made a move. Would you say that the losses to not only New Era, but also Diamonds also played or contributed some type of factor, whether it's big or small, into um, this decision? No, I think, I'll say yes and no. I think the losses obviously are fine, but I think it's the, it's the attitudes. It might be the overall vibe, the overall chemistry. Um, when we were in Lynn Lewis, for example, when we lost, a tournament, it wasn't like, oh my God, let's curse each other out, let's yell at each other, let's do all these things. It was, let's rally together and let's move on to the next game. And that's kind of what happened, you know? And I feel like we needed to make a change in order for individuals to grow because nobody's perfect. And I think we were chasing perfection in a, a situation where we weren't teaching enough. And that's where I took accountability and saying, hey, I need to teach more. I reached out to several coaches, you know, who've been in, who've been in flag for a long time. And that's the one thing I took is that I need to be the greatest teacher of all time. If I do anything, I have to lead through my teaching. But the losses, I don't, I don't think those had anything to do with it. The Diamond's loss was ugly. The way we played was ugly. The responses to everything was ugly. It, it's an emotional game, but I wouldn't say that necessarily had anything to do with my decision. Okay. Um, what, uh, please educate me on this. What is the correct term for flag football when a game like that happens? What's the correct term for that? It, do they call, I was told mercy. Oh, um, so mercy rule pretty much is if you score 18 points or more, um, you pretty much have until the two minute warning of the second half to score. So it's, I guess mercy, but it's like, I mean, the game's pretty much out of hand. At two minutes left, like you can try onside kicks and flag, like you can try, but it's pretty hard to get the ball back and score, so on and so forth. So, um, so they throw in the mercy rule to make sure that the other team just can't score more. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, let's say they have the ball and it's, you know, first down, there's three minutes left on the game. They can drive down and score and just add another touchdown, the game's over already if they have the ball. Now, the, if the offense has the ball, if we're on offense and there's two minutes left, of course the game goes on until we score. If we score, then the game continues. But you have to score by the, pretty much you gotta score, especially if you go scoreless in the first half, you have to score before that two minute warning in the second half. In the second half. So that, so the other team scoring before the two minute half in the second, two minute warning in the second half breaks that mercy rule. Correct. Okay. It will break it. So we would have had to score somewhere between the beginning of the first, the second half and that two minute warning. We would have had to score. Okay. So, hey, things happen. Of course. Things happen. Of course. As head coach, you have to make the calls and sometimes those calls force you to take all the hits. 
right? right. However, after uh, from our first conference, from our first interview, you don't like staying on the negatives. You like to highlight it in order to paint correct. the path for the positive. That's correct. So let's talk about the positives. From from what's happening, you told me about how you want to improve yourself as a coach, and you were taking steps to that. Can you tell me about further steps you are taking in order to be a better coach for your team now? So I think holding people accountable, you know, holding the players accountable is huge. Um, again, teaching everything I think is important. So it's like, hey, I want you to run this route five to seven yards. So when we say five to seven yards, I'm gonna actually show you like, hey, this is why you would run at five to seven. Or, you know, I think I was over here on Thursday and the, the girl asked like, oh, you know, when we run a route to the flats, like, uh, should we go this way? And it's like, and I actually show, you know, showing, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you're gonna take one step and you're gonna hit that flat. You're gonna look for the ball immediately because that ball might be coming hot because the rushers are coming. So it's like just being a better teacher, over teacher, over explaining, you know, really going into detail so that football IQs rise. So I think out of everything, I noticed that we weren't teaching enough. You know, we weren't, we were telling people what to do, but we weren't teaching as a group. And I think, you know, yeah, we're running drills, you know, that's great, but it's like, we're not teaching what the drill is ultimately for. You know, and that's where I wanted to fill a gap. So as a coach, I said to myself, I was like, how can I be the best coach? And it's like, I have to be a better teacher which means I have to learn the game even deeper than I know it, which is why I began reaching out to other coaches, like, give me some words of wisdom, give me some guidance, how do you do this, how do you do that? Hey, if I gotta go out and get a mentor, that's what I do, you know what I mean? So, ultimately, that's what I, I've done. It's like, hey, I'm gonna hold myself accountable like I always do, but from now on, I'm gonna tighten up the ship a little bit because I'm not trying to handle my losing season. I'm telling you guys right now, I'm not trying to handle a losing season, so we gotta figure this whole thing out.